Okay, first we'll take a look at colouring with our blender pens. So I'll just grab one of these out of my pack. And the stamp set that I'll be using today is the Secret Garden stamp set, which is this one here. I'm trying to get rid of that glare out of the way. And I'll be using this image here. So these are um, a clear mount, and to use these, they're, they're really fantastic. So you'll need an acrylic block to go with them, and then you just grab your clear. I don't put stickers on the back of mine. I find them a little bit annoying. But you just stick it to your, your clear block, and then when you're done with it, you just peel it off and, um, and pop it away again. So... There's the rest of the pack. Really, really easy. I keep my backing just so that I can um, keep track of the stamps that I have. Sometimes it's like a jigsaw puzzle getting them back together. But um, I keep my backing sheet just so that I know that I've got all my stamps when I leave events and stuff like that or if you're, if you're um, stamping in a group environment. So just stick that onto your block. You can also get your stamps in wood mount if you prefer them as well. Okay, so I need my stays on. I'm just going to ink up Make sure you ink it up really well. I'm actually going to stamp it twice, I think, just to save me a bit of time for the next video. Just make sure you get that centre nicely stamped, uh, nicely inked up. Okay, and then it's just a matter of pushing down firmly and pulling back up again. Now, if you're very quick, you can clean straight away with our stamp cleaning pad, with our stamp and scrub, which is, I don't, I think it, the camera's a bit close to be able to see it, but it's basically um, a dual side one. We have a stamp and mist, which is a great little cleaner. It's a bit much clear. So just spray um, the cleaner on one side. Wash it on one side and then dry it on the other. Now that's actually come off fairly clean, but if you've got, because stays on is a permanent ink pad, if you've got some staining on your stamps that you can't seem to get rid of, we do have a stays on cleaner as well, which is a solvent cleaner. And to use this, you just dab it on. Whoops, splashed it everywhere. Good on me. So that stamp, that, that one that I did before, I'm going to need to redo that now. Leave it on there for a moment and then just wipe it off with a tissue. And I will do that in a little while. So I'll be re-stamping that one again. So ignore my little boo-boos as well. You get them all when you get my videos. Okay, so I'm going to start with my Pretty in Pink. Now you could also use Pink Pirouette as I think Pretty in Pink is retiring. Now it's a fairly light colour. If you squeeze your ink pad together, what it'll do is transfer some of the ink from the lid, and this is an old style ink pad, we have new ones now, and it'll transfer some um, of the colour into the lid. But because this is such a pale colour, what I prefer to do is grab my reinker and just put a, um, a drop of ink into the lid there. And it doesn't matter which end of your blender pen that you use, just going to dab it into there, I think you can see that. And we're just going to start, I'm just going to blot that before I make more of a mess there. Okay, and then I'm just going to lay down a bit of colour to start with. Now I won't colour in the whole image for you because it. Um, I do take a while colouring in. So you can see how easy that goes down. And it's not, um, I find that when I use the other uh, papers, it'll be like I'm colouring in with texture. So unless you're using really, really small stamped images, this one's quite an open image, um, you, I don't think it works as well. Let's put it that way. Okay, so coming to the big petals, and I'll choose a nice one to colour. They're all nice, but this one's, I can get some good blending on this one. So I start with the open, the edges first because I want them a little bit darker. And then hopefully by the time I get to here, some of that colour has come out and as I move along, that colour lightens.
Now what I can do is just keep my tissue beside me and just wipe my blender pen um, off as I'm going and that will also remove some of that colour. So I want that lighter in there. Okay, we'll do another one. So a little bit darker on the outer edges. I'll wipe off my blender pen for a bit just to remove some of that colour. Oh, I'll probably remove too much now. Okay, so you go around the whole of the petals with that. Just pop that out of the way. Now I'm going to bring in my rose red. Now the rose red is quite a dark colour, so. Um, you can either squeeze the ink pad, as you can see I use this one lots, you can either squeeze the ink pad or just pop a dot of um, colour in there as well, but just bear in mind, just pick up a tiny, tiny amount. Now you don't have to have uh, one for each colour, you can just scribble off onto some scrap paper, which I have here. So you just scribble off onto scrap paper until it runs clear, and then you can use it into your next colour. I'm just going to pick up a tiny amount of colour here, and I'm just going to start at the edges, like at the centre of... Um, that petal, just remove a bit of colour because there's a bit too much on there and that way I can blend that out and that's how you get your shading. Now I do find you get a tiny bit of pilling with the watercolour paper, but not, um, not a huge amount to be really noticeable. So I'll just do this last petal for you as well. What I love about the watercolour paper is that you can actually add more to it and it won't peel so much. I'll show you some of the examples I did on the other paper, which um, I wouldn't make into cards, to tell you the truth. Okay, so that's um, how you blend the colours with the blender pen. And then again, if you wanted to go back and add some pale pink, just scribble that onto some scrap paper until it starts to run clear and then you're ready to go again. So these will actually last you quite a while. Now, I did finish one off, and uh, so that's it. They're all nice and finished and ready to be made into a card. So that's on the watercolour paper. Now, this one I did is um, woeful, and it's on Whisper White, and you can see how it's peeled, and you can see how it's sort of got like texture markings on it. So I think if you're doing small images that require a very small amount of um, colouring, that would work really quite well. And this one is on my um, The Naturals Confetti cardstock, and the same thing happened with there. It's really, really peeled. Um, I don't know whether you can see all the peeling on it, but um, you've got those stripes as well because it was quite wet. Again, if you're doing small areas, I think it would be fine to use either of those cardstocks. But if you're wanting a little bit more, um, you know, of a bit of a nicer look and to be able to blend it easily, uh, the watercolour paper is definitely the way to go. Okay, so I will go and create them into some cards and um, see what we can come up with. And I will also show you colouring with the Aqua Painter. So we'll see you in the next video. Bye.